County Fairgrounds USA, countyfairgrounds.net. Welcome to today's podcast. Hi, Eric. This is Karen from County Fairgrounds. Okay, so you're a performer and a musician, and you do different fairs and festivals throughout the country, and I guess you've been doing it for a long time. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I did my... I did my first paying gig in 1979, so it's been a while. <laughs> and I uh, I did uh, about six years in different parts of Europe, and so I've I've played in 49 of the 50 states and 19 different countries, and opened for folks like Jay Leno, Styx, Little River Band, Dare Supply, Dan Seals, Jason Aldean, Thomas Rhett. I could go on for another 10 minutes on that, but. But yeah, so I definitely have gotten to have some really cool experiences and see a lot of the world with music. One of the questions that always crosses my mind when I do some of these interviews is, how did you get started in this? Huh. Well, um, let's see. I I got into music when I first went to college. I was only 17 years old. First went to college. I uh, had had been playing guitar since I was uh, nine or 10, but hadn't really played in a real band. And when I got to college, I joined a band and um, really enjoyed it. And that's when I really found out just all the wonderful, you know, the power of music to, to give people a good time and entertain them, give them joy, make them think, communicate a message. And so I was pretty hooked then at that point. But what I wanted to be was a lead guitar player in a band. And then I was in a jazz group uh, that got invited to the North Sea Jazz Festival in Holland and the the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland. And so we got a free trip over there, and the band was about to break up anyway. So I just uh, quit the band at the end of that tour while I was in, in Europe. And uh, I ended up just traveling around, hitchhiking around, and basically being a homeless street musician for <laughs> for years and then i ended up you know playing cafes and festivals over there but on and off with just being a homeless i mean i literally slept in a cardboard box in an alley in paris for a couple of weeks and i i would go between long stints where i had actual pain gigs and then i'd be on the road hitchhiking around for a couple of months where i was just making enough playing on the street to eat each day and uh so i i uh i just ended up like i said i wanted to be a, a lead guitar player in a band but i ended up just because of necessity just because i started hitchhiking around and playing on the street i ended up being just a solo guy with, with an acoustic guitar and that got to be so effective that um i ended up that just became who i was the solo acoustic guy rather than a, a lead guitar player in a band Mm, that's yeah. interesting. You were a brave young man. <laughs> brave. Well, yeah, I was. I, uh, oh man, and it just the, the stories I could go on and on. In fact, on my, on my website, I have a uh, a link called Weirdest Gigs, where where I list them off. One time, one time, my agent called me up and she said, "Eric, I've got a great gig for you. It's pretty near your, where you live, um, but it's a little weird." And I said, I told her, I said, "Well." I've done some pretty weird gigs. What are, you, what are you talking about? She said, well, it's at a nudist colony. <laughs> they wanted to play at a nudist colony. And I said, yeah, you know, that would probably is, that would be a little too weird for me. And then as I hung up, I realized, I said, oh, I should, I should make a little list of some of the weirdest gigs I've ever done. So I started writing them down. And as I wrote them down, they came to memory more and more. And um, so I made I made a list of like, 40 of them or something and I sent them to my agent and she laughed her head off and it was funny and then and then that was that well then maybe 15 years later I get a call from a kid at the University of Washington and he says oh Eric I was I was a big fan of your music for a while and I I, now I'm a journalism student and I was supposed to I'm supposed to write a paper on on musicians and the the weird things that musicians have to go through to pay their dues, you know? And I thought about you and I was wondering if I could get some stories from you. And I said, well, it's funny you should mention it because I've got a list of 40 of them right here on my computer. (laughs) And so, so I sent them to him and he used them in his article. And then I, it occurred to me, I should just put them on my website, 
And so I put them mm-hmm. on, my, on my website <laughs> under weirdest gigs. And I've gotten more response for that from that than anything on my website because people just get a kick out of right. those stories. Right, I've yeah. seen it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. wild. So your your act is called Eric E. Yeah, I just go by Eric E. My my last name is Engerbretts, and then nobody can pronounce it, and nobody can remember it. So I just decided at some point to just be Eric E, and people can remember that. Okay. All right. So you've done a lot of festivals, and you know we're county fairgrounds. And we cover county and state fairs across the country. So a yeah. lot of people who listen listen to us, um, how, you've done a lot of county and state fairs, right? Oh yeah, all over the even in Europe. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So what's your idea of a performance, and how long does your performances last? Well, that's the thing about my my performances. There's no, it's different every time, and it and so it, how long it lasts just depends on what the the person who's booking me wants. Sometimes they only want a half an hour. Sometimes they want an hour. Um, it, it just depends on what they want because the, the nature of what I do, it works, it works so well for, for festivals um, and fairs because especially at fairs, you've got 10 year olds and 12 year olds in the audience. And then you've got 90 year olds in the audience and every age in between. And it can be so hard to find an act that pleases the whole age range, you know, and what I do is just perfect for that. What I do is I get up there and I, I'll tell the crowd, pick a year and I'll play you a hit song. And they kind of look like, really? Just any year? And I'm like, yep, pick a year, any year. And so I can do the whole 20th century up till today. And so they'll <laughs> shout out, it, they, you know, somebody will shout out, you know, 1964 and somebody else will say 2004. And, and then there's always a, a joker that'll go, you know, 1918, <laughs> like you could do. And I start playing 1918. He's like, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Um, and I, and it's it's really fun because it's just one instrument. You know, if I do a Led Zeppelin tune, Grandma and Grandpa are okay with it. And it's, it sounds, it's rocky, definitely rocky, but it's, you know, it's not metal. And, and if I do, you know, I can do, I'll, one minute I'll do Led Zeppelin, and the next minute I'll do Peter, Paul, and Mary. Next minute I'll do Duke Ellington, and then we'll jump from that. I'll go to Michael Jackson, and then from that to Randy Travis. You know, so it's an unbelievable amount of variety that you get with my show, but also, uh, you know, the interaction. And then I, I throw in humor, too. I mean, I, I always, since I'm interacting with the crowd between every song to find out what the next year is, um, I... I'm able to throw in a lot of jokes and kind of make people laugh. And so it's just a really relaxed, good time. And that's what I do. Okay. And so you can see because of the nature of that, I can get up. I even had a company one time. I played for Ashley Furniture, you know, one of the biggest. Actually, that is the biggest furniture company in the world. Um, I played for them. They only wanted 10-minute sets. They wanted me to just do 10 minutes once a day. <laughs> so I, I did 10 minutes. It worked great. I could get in 20 20 songs because oh that's the other thing I do if I have a limited amount of time instead of playing the whole song which takes three minutes I just play one verse and one chorus and then jump right to the next year and just keep it moving more like a Vegas show kind of fast and then mm-hmm. um, if if people want the the whole song I'll I, I give them a I give them a symbol or a um, what do you call it like a little thing to do with their hands to like a stretch sign to, to, if, if I'm doing a song and they really want me to do the whole thing and not cut it short, they'll raise their hands up and give me the stretch sing, symbol and then I'll do the whole song and they like that. They like that. They like that they're creating their own concert. And also, I've done over six thousand shows and I've never once played the same set list. Never. Mm. I've done over six thousand shows and never, not one of them has been the same. So that's kind so, of so. So, do you have any? regrets do you kind of sometimes wish you'd done something else for a living oh no 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 i uh i could not be happier the only regret that i have with the way that i chose to do my music is that i uh i started out as a songwriter and i wrote five albums of original music and i sold a lot of records i sold 30,000 records just at my shows um but what happened is, you know, I ended up, um, because I 
turned into to an entertainer and always doing other people's music all the time, it just sort of stunted my songwriting. You know, my voice is always in recovery mode because I do so many shows all the time. And, you know, it's just, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult to make your living as a songwriter. So when I kind of moved into becoming just more of an entertainer, then I could make a living. Um, mm-hmm. But that's the only part that sometimes I regret is I wish I would have had to be writing songs the entire, my, my whole life to to survive because then I'd be a really great songwriter now or I would have a huge, you know, I'd have 20 albums instead of, I've got five now, you know, but, but, uh, but I do write two and a lot of audiences, um, like I said, I just let them create whatever kind of concert they want. Some of them just want to do pop songs off the radio the whole time. Some of them say, do some blues. And so I'll go into blues and I'll get some great crowd response to a lot of blues. Some of them want jazz. And then some crowds just go, play something that you wrote, play an original. So I do that, and then I get such a good response, they go, play some more originals. And and uh, that's the nice part about the flexibility I have is that I can just really do what the crowd wants. And they and they like that. They feel like they're creating their own show, which they actually are, instead of just sitting back and watching something that's the same every every time the guy comes on stage. You know what I'm saying? So you're primarily a ground a grounds act? A what? A grounds act? I don't know what a grounds act is. <laughs> Somebody who walks the fairgrounds. No, I don't and, do that and at per, all. And performs. No, you don't? No, you I don't perform do on a stage? All. Yeah. You perform on a stage? stage? I, yeah, because I have to okay. have I have to have uh, a lot of foot pedals. I do I do looping and some effects and and some things to make it sound a lot bigger than just one acoustic guitar. And um, I don't do anything pre-recorded, but I do looping and different things and um, sound effects and stuff. So I have to have all these pedals on the on the floor. I even loop vocals, kind of like a Bobby McFerrin kind of thing. Um, to, and I have some funny comedy little things that make the crowd laugh, like an, like I imitate a rapper and some things, you know. Um, so because of all that gear, yeah, I always have to play on the stage. I can't walk around. Okay, so you've done a lot of things. Uh, is there some place that you would like to perform that you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet? Well, that's an interesting, an interesting question. Um, well, I suppose, you know, ultimately some of the legendary clubs like the Whiskey and Go-Go or the Troubadour, or some of the, you know, the famous songwriter clubs in in New York or LA, I suppose, but, but, um, no, that's, that's, uh, that's a tough question. I've never, I haven't, haven't, haven't thought about that too much. You know, just, just, uh, I, I, I actually prefer small, I kind of prefer being, I've done, I prefer being on small stages where people are kind of surprised when you're really quality. Um, mm-hmm. Because I've, you know, I've done shows where in front of, you know, five, ten thousand people, and they, there's no surprise when you get up there and you're really good. They're like, well, yeah, you better be good. I paid thirty bucks to be here, and and there's ten thousand people here. He's, he, he, of course, he's good. He should be good. But when you're in a little club or a small fair, and there's, you know, forty, fifty people listening, and then they feel like, wow, this guy this is really fun and this guy's way better than I thought this was going to be. Just that surprise factor is really, really fun. And it puts an energy in the room that it, it, it kind of, everybody feels it, you know, and I, I feed off that energy. The crowd feeds off me feeding off the energy and it, it really makes the show really special because then they feel like they're discovering somebody and they're discovering and they got more than they thought they were going to get instead of, you know, going just to this big festival and going, yeah, you better be good. <laughs> you know, so I enjoy the, I enjoy playing the small stages and kind of being the underdog or the the big fish in the small pond kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, I take it you have quite a few bookings, and so how do people reach you if they want to book you? Well, the easiest thing to remember is just Eric E dot com E R I C hyphen E dot com and then you can email me from there, from there from the website 
Um, but my other info, my otherwise you could do info. You could email me at info at eric e dot com, or my phone number two zero eight five nine six zero six three three. Um, and any of those, but the easiest thing to remember is just eric e dot com. And yeah, so how long have you been? Oh, how long have you been at this? How long have you been at this, Eric? Well, since 1979. Oh, that's a long time. <laughs> yep, that's why I got. That's why I got 300 songs I can do right off the cuff, and uh, and I've got the experience to be able to read the audience really well. And and again, that's the most groups. They they have their 15 songs and they put together a show and they go, these are the 15 songs and we're going to do them in this order, and they get up there and. Regardless of how the show goes or whatever, they do those 15 songs in that order. But I get up there and and I ask the crowd what they want and I play what they want and I adjust if if I can see that they really want upbeat stuff to dance to or that kind of style, I'll just do more of that. If they are in kind of a quiet or listening mode, I'll do more of the listening type music and so I just adjust on the fly and and that makes it kind of a unique and interesting show. And the neat thing too is there's a lot of places. Uh, that'll have me come back every year. Uh, usually they want a little variety in their acts, but they'll have me every year because every time I come on stage, it's different, and the songs are different. So, and the people kind of uh, get used to, are you having Eric E. back again this year? And they go, yep, and they make it a, a standard, regular deal, and, and people kind of uh, get to know me, and so I enjoy that too. But that's another thing about me having done it for so many years is that I've got a huge repertoire. And I'm good at, good at reading the crowd and playing what they want. You have a family? I sure do. Yeah, I've got three three grown up sons, and and I uh, yeah, when my sons were littler, I I just there was a period um, of a about a decade where I just stayed around the Northwest. I mainly just played Seattle, Portland, Boise, Missoula. Tried to keep it pretty much around the Midwest, and then occasionally I'd go off to Europe for a couple of weeks and come back. But uh, pretty much stayed at home, just things I could drive to. But now I'm playing all over the country again. My my sons are all. I uh, just got one left in his last year of college, and um, and so and they're all three in still in my hometown here in Moscow, Idaho, and so I get to see them all the time. And, but now that they don't need me around, I uh, I'll go. I'll, you know, I'm going nationwide again. I play I play a lot in Florida. I play all over the Midwest. I played the Ohio State Fair for six days. I played the Iowa State Fair a couple times. Uh, I play some of the huge fairs. I play some of the tiny little fairs in cowboy country, and and I love going love going all over the country. Okay, so do any of your kids have a tendency to follow after you and what you do? <laughs> I uh, yeah, it's funny. All three of them play the guitar and sing. All three of them do, and they're playing for my little grandkids when they go to bed now. And and uh, my middle son is a really good drummer, but he also plays guitar and sing. And the other two are guitarists and sing. They haven't. Um, none of them really want to do it professionally. Um, but we we jam together, and someday I, fa- I fantasize about having a little. Having a little band and playing with all four of all four of us sometime would be really fun. We'll probably do it someday, but right now they're kind of in the throes of, you know, brand new careers and brand new babies, so they're they're pretty busy mm-hmm. now. Oh, you're a grandpa. I'm a, I'm a grandpa. I actually am. You know. You want to give us your contact information one more time? Yes, ma'am. Um, just Eric Dash E dot com. E R I C hyphen E dot com eric dash e dot com or you can email me info at eric dash e dot com or you can call me at two zero eight five nine six zero six three three and I will guarantee you he will enjoy having me at your fair if you bring me I guarantee it okay thank you thank you <laughs> all right have a great rest of the day you too bye bye. All right, bye-bye.